All right, so well, a lot has been already said about uh, models and buildings in general, so I'm going to skip all that part and just get to the cut to the chase and talk about a bunch of problems that we are working on, and Rahul mentioned some of them in his talk yesterday, but uh, my plan here today is to delve into a little bit more detail. So b most of what I'll be describing today can be uh, sort of falls under the umbrella of inverse modelings, and by model, Throughout this talk, I would only want to emphasize that the model means a dynamical model of the system. Kind of. So we want to predict what the temperature in the building is going to be. So the problem of uh, uh, doing any sort of model-based control for buildings is that they require fairly high accuracy uh, of the model that you identify. And it is no secret that any advanced scheme like model predictive control needs a fairly accurate model for in order to save some energy of the system and get a, get a correct forecast of what the uh, temperature in the building looks like. But the, also a requirement to getting these higher models, high accuracy models, is that you need a lot of sensors. Uh, you need a um, lot of data from the buildings to train a, this, uh, a model of high fidelity. But unfortunately, most buildings, they are not, um, they don't come pre-configured with uh, several thousands of sensors that we see on campuses and on research facilities in general. Also, any small or uh, medium scale commercial building would be very reluctant in uh, investing several thousand dollars, which is quite a significant portion of their electricity bill, uh, to, to just retrofit without knowing beforehand what's the cost benefit of adding additional sensors to their space. <laughs> so there's definitely a trade-off between um, uh, the data quality that you can obtain by adding additional sensors and the accuracy of the model that you intend to learn from the uh, from those sensors. And that's that's one aspect that we want to address. And when we say data quality, we characterize data quality by the uncertainty in the sensor data that you are measuring. So there can be several reasons. Uh, it could be due to the placement of uh, where the sensor is. If it's a temperature sensor, it's fairly sensitive to where it's placed. But there could be other reasons, just the absolute cost. So if I'm using a $1 diode to measure, uh, say, solar irradiance, as opposed to a $500 per anometer to measure irradiance, there's a very, uh, there's going to be an uncertainty, and uh, the quality of the data that you get is going to vary. But we don't want to stop there. We don't want to just end at accuracy. We want to continue this analysis and see how the quality of data in turn affects uh, the closed loop performance of a model-based controller. And in particular, we want to reveal this trend of how the performance of a model predictive controller changes as the accuracy of the underlying model also changes. So with these two objectives in mind, really the goal is to provide maximum benefit uh, of in terms of accuracy of the model without uh, uh, adding a whole lot of additional sensors. And one solution is what we have come up with is called Model IQ. It's a methodology which is being made into a toolbox, and it's really simple. You start with uh, some information about what model you want to identify and what algorithm you will use to identify it along with the data that you have. Uh, and it will spit out these trade-offs between model accuracy and control performance, uh, uncertainty in the data, and the model accuracy itself. But to understand what it does underneath the hood, I will give you the quickest possible crash course on how do you model a building dynamically. So say I have to learn the dynamical model of this room, the first thing I would do is measure all possible disturbances of this room. So there's a chicken and egg problem here. I want to avoid using additional sensors, but to begin with, I need to measure some disturbances. So the way out is using these uh, virtual sensing uh, uh, techniques or using some low-cost temporary deployment to establish this initial model. So, but the idea is you measure these disturbances, and uh, this kind of a modeling is called gray box RC modeling for buildings. It's very popular and seems to be effective. And the whole premise is that for each surface of the zone, you can write down the dynamical equation of how the temperature of that surface will evolve subjected to different disturbances. And these disturbances are just thermal loads. Uh, so once you have such equations, uh, you can form an RC network and lump everything together to get a, a state space model with the states of the systems are the uh, temperature of the nodes of this network, and the inputs to the system are the disturbances and the control. So you choose your favorite parameter estimation algorithm and metric, which is usually least square. And the goal is you want to identify these R and C values of the model that you, that you set up. So now we understand how this works. Uh, and we can now reason about what the accuracy of the model depends upon. 
So it depends upon three things. You know, it will depend upon the structure that you choose. If it's, it's a structure which respects a lot of physics, then the accuracy might be very good. Uh, but it also depends upon the estimation algorithm that you have, uh, underlying estimation algorithm to identify the parameter. So the whole idea of model IQ is, well, when these two things are fixed, so once you have decided on, I'm going to use a particular model structure and use this uh, nonlinear regression to estimate the parameters, then you can reason about uh, the quality of the data or the uncertainty in the data and its effect on model accuracy, which is one of the trade-offs that we want to address. So the way to do this is really, really the simplest way you can think of where it works, is you gather some initial measurement data from temporary sensors or from virtual measurements, and you train your baseline model. So this is the data that you get. You use your estimation, you get a baseline, and then um, you go one input at a time. So this is one of the inputs that is required to train the model, and you artificially perturb it uh, in a meaningful way, not just any random perturbation. And this is very sim uh, similar in flavor to, say, a generalized sensitivity analysis and statistics, just that it is being done for accuracy and input-output rather than parameters and outputs. But with each of these data sets, the only difference is that one of the inputs was artificially perturbed, and we know the amount of perturbation we added to obtain these artificial data sets from your initial data set, and you repeat your parameter estimation on this artificial set to, to learn new models, just virtual models which, which don't actually, uh, which are not being learned on real data, but artificial data. And there's no point for guessing what happens next. You want to compare the accuracy of these virtual models with your baseline model to uh, really hone in on which inputs or the uncertainty in which of the inputs affect the accuracy of the model the most. And that's really the goal here. So to illustrate this, uh, we did this with a, with a real building. This is a building in Philadelphia. And we did the, the model IQ analysis for one of the zones. And the first thing was we established a baseline model for the zone based on whatever sensors they had. And when you do this perturbation analysis, you can see the baseline is pretty good in terms of forecasting the temperature already. But we want to know which inputs uh, are, uh, affect the accuracy of the model the most. So we do this uncertainty analysis on this data set, and the results look something like this. So each of these plots is a different input stream of the data. And the way to interpret this plot is that the y-axis is the change in the accuracy uh, due to added perturbations in the data, which we are mean meaningfully adding to the original data set. So there are two inferences. One is that there's an inverse square trend, which, which is kind of intuitive that as the error increases, the model accuracy will also decrease. But the second is that the, the decrease in accuracy is not same for all the, all the different inputs. Some inputs are affecting the accuracy the most compared to, compared to other inputs. And that's really what we were trying to uh, capture. So it would be very nice if we can uh, get all this information and come up with a single number which can rank these inputs in terms of how much they affect accuracy of the model. And that's what is called a model accuracy sensitivity coefficient. It's just a simple ratio of what's the average change in the accuracy uh, to that of the magnitude of the perturbation that you added. So for this particular zone, it turns out, although you can measure 10 different things, in your model structure, really, these top three things will affect the accuracy the most. So you should focus on uh, adding uh, uh, sensors uh, on to, to get accurate measurements of these different inputs, as opposed to, say, maybe the convective heat gain or some radiative heat gain, yeah? Oh, so my bad. The, the zone in uh, under consideration has a porch area, which is an adjacent zone. So it's very affected by what's going on in the adjacent zone as, the, as well. So let's move on. So we've established that the data quality affects accuracy, and we can rank these uh, uh, inputs to reason about where we should invest in sensors, because even as Money said, we have to address this problem of uh, cost benefit associated with the sensor. But accuracy is really not the metric we are looking for. We are looking for, say, something like energy. Uh, so with MPC versus uh, control performance, what we do is uh, we do an empirical analysis in which uh, the same model structure is used to implement a model predictive controller in which the whole idea is that you want to minimize the total energy subject to some temperature comfort that you want to maintain uh, with the model that you have learned. So it's very easy to implement uh, in MATLAB, and what we do is uh, you implement MPC first on the baseline model, which has a high accuracy and was trained on the original data with no uncertainty or whatever the regular data was. And it works well. You get about maybe 14% reduction in cost. And then you, uh, and this reduction is happening because you're pre-cooling during peak hours. And then you uh, uh, 
deliberately train the uh, work, work, give an MPC a bad model, which has high accuracy, to throw it off. And you see that it does get thrown off, and the energy savings you get decrease. So this is very intuitive. This is going to happen. But what we want to reveal is the trend. So we want to reveal what is the, just maybe a couple of minutes more. So I want to reveal what is the change in the uh, energy perform reduction you achieve from model predictive control as the accuracy of the model changes. So now let's link it back to uh, the amount of money you need to retrofit. So say you want to improve model accuracy from one region of this graph to the other or along this curve. Based on where you are operating in this region, there's the cost benefit that you obtain out of that is going to change. So if you invest in sensors to go from 0.4 to 0.35, there's hardly any uh, savings that you will obtain. But if you in invest in the sensors to get the same improvement in another part of this curve, there's a larger uh, uh, benefit uh, associated with it. So this kind of a diminishing return principle, which is usually hidden from the user, but uh, such an empirical analysis will reveal that. So the last thing we did was to uh, address sensor placement and how it can introduce biases in the measurement. So for one of these zones, we had a bunch of sensors which were uniformly distributed in the zone, but were measuring the same thing, so the temperature of the zone. And our goal was to see if the thermostat, which is located on the south wall, has any bias in it. So we compared the mean uh, temperature against the thermostat. Uh, and what we see is that even though there's a small bias, the zone temperature is actually the most significant or the most sensitive uh, measurement. So even that small bias or uncertainty due to the location of the thermostat can, can uh, throw off the model accuracy. So this work has been extended to uh, account for the behavior of the data. Maybe it's not just best to compare thermostat against the entire mean. Maybe you should just do some kind of a permutation to also figure out where to place sensors in, in, in this particular setting. So we use some non-parametric statistics to uh, instead of just comparing means. And the only finding I want to share is that what we find for this particular zone, uh, it turns out that if you have three sensors to measure the zone temperature, it's actually better than having, say, four sensors. So it's kind of non-intuitive. but. You were able to tell that because you did this uh, uh, non-parametric statistic analysis. So all this is published and um, uh, freely available. You can even see the code on this website and go through our work. And I will stop here in the rest of time. All right, thanks. Take any questions. We have time for one question. Yeah. So it's analytically, it's very hard to uh, to come up with that metric, especially if you are looking at how uncertainty. Uh, uh, so it depends upon what sensor data you are getting initially. If your data is really good, the inflection point will be right about what you are measuring accurately. So on either side, the model accuracy will decrease. But for very cheap sensors, it turns out it's better to have uncertainty, which in turn is saying that your original measurement was not really good enough. Right? So, so it varies based on what sensor you have initially. But yeah. Let's maybe take the next ones offline. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thank the speaker again. All right. And our next speaker is Leandro Marcolino or Marcelino? Marcolino. Marcolino. Okay. Great. From uh, USC. Yes. Correct.